back here at Pete Matthews Coliseum, Jacksonville State University. It is the TV24 Holiday Showcase, and we are in game number. Right now, the White Plains Wildcats up 31 to 22 over the section Lions. John Holder, I'm Chase Robinson, and we are courtside here with you, bringing you this game. And John, we have got two more good high school basketball games coming up after this one. The next one is a marquee matchup anywhere in the state of Alabama. The latest A S W A basketball rankings that came out this week had Plainview, who was I believe the state runner-up last year in 3A, with four out of five starters back. Had them as the number one team in the state in 3A. Their opponent tonight here at the Coliseum, Talladega, the number eight team in 5A. Should be a great matchup right after this one. Both teams are already here. Saw the Talladega cheerleaders in the house. Plainview team just headed to the dressing room. And then after that, a big-time Calhoun County matchup. Alexandria taking on Oxford. Both of those teams are just on the cusp of being ranked in the top ten in the state in their respective classifications. And uh, Oxford, of course, the defending county champions. And not certainly not out of the realm of possibility those two teams could meet in the Calhoun County Tournament at some points. So this might be a preview of that coming up in a little more than a month. You are right about that. Two good games coming up. But we have got one more half to go in this one between White Plains and Section. There you see Coach Pruitt getting the troops ready there for the second half and a, a really good comeback there at the end of the first quarter like we've been talking about. Uh, but uh, this is going to be a good second half here. And and you see Coach Chris Randall and the White Plains Wildcats. You know, uh, with all of that has happened with this classic event that we've had here, this showcase, with all the cancellations of games, teams that couldn't get here, the power outage, the delays, all of that, uh, it's going to be a fantastic event. We'll laugh, look back and laugh at this in about a year or two, but it has been an interesting last 24 hours, that's for sure, getting ready for this event. Absolutely. White Plains will start things off on offense here in the second half. Burridge, he'll drive it in, kicks it back out to Clay. And it's time to Messer. And Messer out to Helms. Inside to Preston, his shot is up and off the side of the iron and no good. And that will be Austin Reed. He'll get it up court to Woodall for the Lions. Woodall goes up and his shot falls. Nice running jumper on the inside. Good floor manager is Woodall and section back to within seven at 31 24 you know this is not the most talented white plains team it's not the most talented team that chris randall has had but it's a team that works very well together it's a good passing team good ball movement they do running the offense and a good shooting team from the perimeter as well burridge inside to preston he'll go up legs went up the glass and in nice head fake on the inside to get the basket right now white plains will be satisfied with trading baskets because they are back to a nine-point lead. Three-pointer on the way from Davis off the iron, no good. Woodall ends up with the ball, and he's going to drive in and to the corner. And a timeout is called there by the section Lions and Coach Jeremy Pruitt. Smith. We'll be back in just a minute here with more of the TV24 Holiday Showcase. Shooting the ball very well. well so that is one of the few baskets they've only made. Had seven points here in the first five minutes of quarter number three. That was Reed who laid it up for the Lions. Preston on the other end. Pulls up back to Burridge. Fakes the three to Clay who takes the three off the back of the iron. Ball loose. It's going to go out. And there will be a foul called. Looks like they're going to call that on White Plains. Drake Preston with a foul. It'll be sign out for section. It's the first uh, foul whistled against White Plains, 245 to go here in the third. First foul called the second half. There have been three team fouls whistled against section. Bryson Woodall drives in, kicks it down low, shot up and good for Trevor Gentry there for the Lions. Nice penetration, dishing it off. Good ball movement, nice set there by section as they cut it back down to single digits at 39 31. Clay to Burridge and Burridge will travel there so it'll be uh, Lions basketball here and then we'll inbound it right at half court. First time we've really seen the section press be effective the 
Last couple of times, White Plains has really had not much trouble breaking the press. That time, all kinds of problems. They caused the travel and the turnover, so let's see what Section can do. They've been a team of runs here where they've been able to cut it down but never really take control of the basketball game. Now back again down by eight. Woodall. He's going to drive in. Ball loose. And White Plains will end up with the basketball. Watch an action on the baseline that time, but White Plains comes out with it. Preston drives in over to Chase Helms. He'll fire up the three, rims out. And that will be a pushing foul called against Burridge here for the Wildcats. Burridge coming in over the back that time with a foul, trying to get the rebound. And so section, offense has been at a premium for section here for most of this game. They on another dry spell here. Let's we'll see what they can do in this last minute and a half of the third quarter. Woodall drives, goes up. His shot is up and good there. Woodall, good penetrator. Makes good decisions as far as when to penetrate, when to dish off, when to keep it. That time decided to keep it, take the layup himself, and section back to within six. Clay drives in, gets his shot sent back out, and Chase Helms gets it. Helms pulls up, jump shot on the way, no good. And that will be Dylan Davis up ahead for the Lions over to Woodall. He'll pull up. Keeps his dribble going over to Davis. Under a minute to go here in the third quarter. Section now just looking for somebody trying to go inside. Gentry goes inside that time and he's fouled and will send him to the line for two. Strong move to the basket. Double team was able to get the ball up and draw the foul. So for section, this will be Trevor Gentry, the 6'2 senior. At the line to shoot two shots here for the section Lions with 49.4 to go in the third. And the first one's good. It has been an interesting afternoon at the Coliseum. We started off with a Jackson State men's win by 19 today against the Louisiana Monroe. We played to the 6-17 mark of the first quarter of this game, and then we had about a 30-minute delay on a power outage. We're running a little bit behind as far as the TV24 Holiday Hoop Showcase. Clay across the way for the White Plains Wildcats. Over to Burridge. Burridge takes it to the corner and goes baseline. Trapped underneath. And the Lions get the basketball and jump ball will be called and it will be sections ball. Length of the floor Houston coming in for section here as they'll bring in Jacob Gentry. We saw him in the first half with a couple of minutes there, and they'll bring him in. Also going to bring in off the bench Wiley McCutcheon. First time I think we've seen action from the 11th grade. This is all a junior senior roster of the eight players that section brought down from Jackson County to Jacksonville today. Woodall outside. Shot is on the way. No good from McCutcheon. And that is. Matthew Clay bringing it up. Five seconds left. Clay to Preston. Three on the way. No good. And that will be the end of the third quarter. And the White Plains Wildcats lead it 39 to 34. And we will be back in just a minute with the final quarter here from the TV24 Holiday Showcase. Hey moms, you need something to haul your team in? Check out the crossovers at driveteam1.com. Equinox, Cherokee, RAV4, Santa Fe, and Rogue. Driveteam1.com. What's in your driveway? If your children are getting tired of the same old food, give them a hot piece of my Kentucky Fried Chicken and watch them smile. There's nothing like my chicken to start kids having a good time. Get a bucket of chicken. Make a chicken have a barrel of fun. Goodbye, ho ho. Get Kentucky Fried Chicken. Come on, everyone. America loves what the Colonel cooks. Ten dollar chicken share. Bucket of fun.
Hello, I'm Chief Bill Partridge, Oxford Police Department. We have a simple saying here, lock it, hide it, keep it. Remember, lock your doors, hide your valuables, and you get to keep them. That way burglars can't see what's inside your vehicles, and as long as you lock them, your vehicle and your property will stay safe. Thank you. Historic Banning Mills is the largest and longest zipline canopy adventure in the world. It's located in your own backyard near Carrollton, Georgia. Historic Banning Mills offers over nine miles of courses, 52 sky bridges, and over 90 different zip lines, soaring at speeds of up to 60 miles per hour and up to 3,400 feet in length. Most everyone in the family can participate, even the little ones. That's not enough. Climb the Guinness World Records tallest freestanding rock climbing wall at four. Back here at Jacksonville State, we've got one more quarter to go in the White Plains Wildcats up 39 to 34. John Holder and Chase Robinson here with you as the Wildcats lead the Lions and the Wildcats start the fourth quarter off on offense. Preston has it. Looks to go inside and he'll get it back out to Helms. Helms up to Clay. Over to Messer this time. Helms thinks about the three, and he will travel. So a turnover right off the bat here in quarter number four for White Plains. They lead it by five. All in all for section, probably the third quarter was their best quarter of the three that they played as they were down at one point in that quarter by 12, but battled back toward the end of the quarter to cut it down to five. Woodall up top for the Lions. He's going to drive in this time, goes up, and Preston will foul him on the way up, so that will send Bryson Woodall to the free throw line for two. Woodall does a good job of running the point for section. He's a guy that's a good ball handler, does a good job of breaking pressure, great job of finding open men underneath, a good penetrator. And he'll have his first opportunity to go to the line to shoot some free throws here. And the first one is good. White Plains has had a couple of opportunities to kind of put section away. They've been up by seven, by nine, by eight, by 12. The section just keeps battling back, and they've cut this latest deficit from 12 all the way back down to three. Preston will toss it out of bounds. I'm going to go back towards the Lions here. Preston with a bad pass that time. He could not see the guy it was intended for, made a bounce pass, bounced it out of bounds, and Chris Randall is going to call a timeout for White Plains here. 7.05 to go in the game. A three-point lead there for the White Plains Wildcats as a section has fought their way back. Saw a 12-point game in the third quarter. Now back to a three-point game as White Plains is hanging on here, John. I think uh, late third quarter, early fourth quarter, White Plains coach Chris Randall not real happy with some of the decision-making. Uh, Ill-advised shots and ill-advised passes there, just not taking care of the basketball. Some unforced turnovers. That's probably what he is in the huddle talking to his team about the other NDC section coach Jamie Pruitt there. He's got to be proud of his team. There's a couple of times here where the game could have got away from him. As we said earlier, down by eight at one time, down by nine at the end of the uh, at the half. They were down by 12 in the third quarter and they just keep battling back. And just the latest run has pulled them back to within three. First horn sounds. The teams will be getting back out on the floor here. See the Talladega cheerleaders already in the house. They're already in place on the east side of the Coliseum. Getting ready to see their eighth-ranked Tigers coming up next in just a few moments against the number one-ranked team in 3A, the Plainview Bears, the Talladega cheerleaders here. I've seen a lot of Talladega fans coming in. No doubt a lot of Plainview fans. They've been here for a couple of hours. They came in to watch section. Of course, section just a few miles up the road, so get a chance to watch the Lions with their neighborhood school before they watch their... Bears play here in just a few moments. Woodall over to Branford, who drains the three and ties it up at 39. Branford with a monster three. Now they get a chance to set the press and causing all kinds of trouble for White Plains. They barely get it across before the 10 second time through the Wildcats. Burridge underneath gets it back out to Clay. Clay back to Helms up top.
play drives in this time, gets it back out to Branham. Three on the way from Helms. Hits nothing, rebounded there by Dylan Davis, who will bring the ball up now for the Lions. Section with a chance to take their first lead since quarter number two, and they're going to get it on a monster three-point play. Trevor Gentry laying it up while getting fouled. As you take a look at the replay here, went up strong with the ball. Got the two points, chance for the three-point play here. That's the biggest play of the game, biggest sequence for Section there, one. They get a basket on this end, a three-point basket, come back and force an air ball on the other end, come back to the other way, a chance to complete the old-fashioned three-point play. So that's a six-to-nothing turnaround run there in just the last 30 seconds or so by the section Lions. All of a sudden, they go from three down to three up. Branford will pick up a push and foul there for the section Lions on the full-court press. So White Plains, another opportunity to break the press here. Coach Pruitt probably not... Uh, not dissatisfied with that. That's an aggressive foul to take those guys. Clay up ahead to Preston. Ball's going to go out off of section, so it will stay with the Wildcats on their end of the floor. Burridge will take the inbound pass up top for the Wildcats. He pulls out, gets it to Messer. Messer takes his turn driving in, goes up, and Messer is fouled. will go to the line for two. Right now, I believe section, my calculations are correct here, is on a, was this a 15 to nothing run? They were down 39 to 27 at one point in the second half of the third quarter. And they have battled back to go ahead 42 to 39. And White Plains is now the team that just can't buy a basket, missing that free throw right there. So this is a 15 to nothing run by section. One more up ahead for Messer. And it is no good. And Gentry pulls the rebound down for the Lions, and he takes off across half court. Over to Wood all this time. Woodall drives, kicked it to Reed. Reed makes a move, ball loose. Woodall gets it back. The long ball is good that time for Austin Reed. Section couldn't buy a basket in the first quarter, and they can't miss here in the fourth quarter. Section now up by 16 and another near turnover. That'll be a foul whistle there. And it will be against Woodall. You get the holding foul. So White Plains. Looks to break the press once again as Burridge takes the inbound. It's one on one on the other end, Preston and Reed. Burridge takes this turn with a three ball, no good off the front of the iron. And a foul called that time. It will be against. Good job Dylan of hustle Davis. and rebounding by White Plains that time. But they need some offense. They've got to have a basket here. This is an 18 to nothing run by section in the last half of the third quarter and early fourth. To go back to about the two or three minute mark of the third, the last time that White Plains has scored a point. They have not scored in the first three minutes and 10 seconds of the fourth quarter until right there. So nice free throw coming from White Plains. Houston Gonder, and that is a big basket just to break the scoring drought. And the second free throw is good. So back to a four-point lead for section here in the fourth quarter. Woodall up top for the Lions. Over to Davis, and he'll hand it off. Gentry this time back to Davis. In the corner, long ball three, no good. Gentry gets the rebound. He'll make a move. He goes up this time. His shot no good. And Reed will be fouled this time, and that will send him into the free throw line. Gentry and Reed doing a great job. 6-2, uh, 6-3 six, six, guys on the inside. Couldn't get a shot to fall in that sequence, but a great job of boxing out, getting those backside rebounds. Look at this sequence right here. It's the ball again, goes up, draws the foul. 
about three rebounds in a row there on the offensive rebounds in a row on the inside for section. Second free throw is good for Reed. Makes it a 47-41 ball game. Ball loose on the other end. It's going to go out of bounds off of the hand of Dylan Davis. Went for the steal there, so it's going to stay with the Wildcats. Jamie, Helms is going to check back in for White Plains. Jamie Prude over there kind of patting his guys on the rear, saying good job. He loves the hustle. He loves the flying around on the floor there. Get a little skinned elbow or knee, but that's okay. In the corner is Gondra up to Helms to Clay. Clay drives down low. Burridge, his shot is up and good. Nice head fake by Burridge. Got not one, but two section players off the floor that time, and then just banged it in for an easy basket. Three-pointer from Davis, no good. And that will be a foul whistled against Reed. And it Reed with a push off that time underneath the basket. There's been some battles going on, especially on this section offensive end for those rebounds. Reed with a push that time. That will create a one and one situation as now that is the eighth actual team foul against section. So they buzz in and remind the officials that we are now in a bonus situation. So section tried to hang on to that four point lead chase Robinson 47 43 they have dominated about the last quarter of play here as we are 345 to go in the game Helms is at the free throw line for the White Plains Wildcats and the first one is or the front end of the one and one no good and that is Austin Reed pulling the rebound down for the Lions. Has done a lot from the inside and the outside. He tries for the three ball. No good. Burridge gets the rebound for the Wildcats. He pulls up, gets it to Clay, who crosses half court for White Plains. Clay drives, pulls up, goes up, and no good. Gentry to Woodall to Reed underneath. Reed will be fouled. And that will send Austin Reed, the senior, to the, big, the free throw line. Big man Austin Reed doing a great job of running the floor that time, creating the contact, drawing the foul. You know, the last three or four times down the floor, Chase, I, I don't think that Section's done a real good job of being patient and running their offense. Yep. They're coming down just throwing up threes, and that's not where they have been making this comeback. The comeback has been being very patient on the inside with the two guys, the big guys inside, Reed and Gentry, getting some points in there. and. Maybe they'll go back to that because the three has not been real good to him. This time the three is no good from Davis. Reed gets it back. He gets it back to Davis. Ball loose. Who's going to have it? Woodall gets it for the Lions. Reed has it near the timeline. Three minutes to go here, John. As Gentry will drive in this time. Back to Reed. He'll take his turn driving. Shot no good. And that'll be a jump ball, and it's going to stay with the Lions. Smart play by Branford there. He knew the possession arrow was in favor of the Lions, so he goes rushing in there to try to get both hands of the ball and create, a, in essence, a turnover and get the ball right back to section. Good job by Branford. Woodall into Davis. Long three on the way. No good. And Clay will have it as a foul is called. Physical action underneath the bench there, but again, section just uh, not being bashful at all. We'll put it that way as far as throwing up the threes, but some ill-advised threes, and they are not making those at this point in time, but now a foul, and White Plains has a chance to score some points without taking time off the clock. Section has dominated the back half of the third quarter and the fourth quarter. White Plains led this game for two and a half quarters pretty comfortably there was some back and forth there but chase section really took command late in the third quarter second free throw is good there for clay hits both of them and we are back to a three-point ball game woodall bringing it up for the lions he's trapped in the backcourt and a timeout is called there by coach jamie pruitt in the section lions Nice timeout by Section at this point in time with White Plains cutting it down to three. You don't want to create a turnover there. Pretty good timeout. It's the first time White Plains has really done a lot, a job of setting the press there. 
So a chance for Coach Pruitt to talk with his team about the press. He realizes that, realizes that White Plains probably going to try to create some turnovers, create some momentum here in this last two and a half of the game. 48-45 here. White Plains always a physical team. Section putting it right back at him. Yeah, been a very physical game, especially on the uh, offensive end by section down here on the other end of the floor. It's been a physical fourth quarter. As we said, uh, coming up next, Talladega and Plainview. After that, Oxford and Alexandria. See the Oxford basketball team. Oxford cheerleaders have made their way into the arena here, sitting on the east end. There's a good shot of the Yellow Jackets coming up. They're chilling out, getting ready for the big matchup with the Alexandria Valley Cubs coming up. Our scheduled start time for that was 6.30. We're not going to make that because of the delay that we had. But you just stay here, right here with us right after this game. With about a 10 or 15-minute warm-up period, we'll bring you Talladega and Plainview. Great high school basketball game there. And then it's always interesting anytime Alexandria and Oxford play in basketball. And so we'll have a fantastic matchup coming up there in the nightcap. White Plains picks up a still on the other end. And they are down by three as Matthew Clay will drive in, goes baseline, and he will go up and nothing. And that is Gentry underneath, and that will be Burridge picking the foul up there for the Wildcats. And Gentry will uh, go to the free throw line. Matthew Clay, I don't know if I've seen that many head fakes by one person at one time in my life. There had to be at least four head fakes there, maybe five. And finally, he did get the players in the air and got the, uh, didn't get the shot he wanted, but he did get the shot off after four consecutive head fakes. That was impressive. That was say. impressive. Gentry, front end is good. And for the senior. 6-2 senior Trevor Gentry. Big free throw there for section. Go back to a two-basket lead. And the second one falls. And a five-point lead. 2.19 to go here as Preston gets it across. Helms drives, gets it to Clay. His three-pointer is no good. And that'll be a push off there by Preston. And that will send, I believe it will be Gentry. Gentry, Gentry back Gentry was line. pushed to the back as he was trying to go for that rebound. Pretty obvious. And so he will be at the line. And a chance to extend this lead back out to seven points, a three-basket game if he can make both of these with 2.05 to go. And the first one is good. Gentry, a good free throw shooter. Big man on the inside. We've seen him banging around in, on the inside all day, but it comes out to the free throw line, and they would have knocked down some important free throws, but he misses that one. Branford, though, fires up the three and knocks it down. Huge threes for Branford. Branford hit one that gave Section their initial lead here in the second half, and that one puts them back up by nine. Matthew Clay returns the favor from way outside on the other end. 54 to 48 is Section's lead here with a minute 50 to go and a timeout called by the White Plains Wildcats. Matthew Clay from way downtown. On the other end, we see Branford knocked down his second timely three of the game. It's not been so much the shots that Branford's made, but he made the the three that gave them the lead early in the game. It was tied up at 39. He made the three that put them up at 42-39. Then he makes that three that puts them back up by nine. Of course, White Plains answers Clay from way beyond the timeline with that three. No one was out there because I think no one thought he was even going to attempt the shot, and he drained it from way outside beyond the timeline, probably a 22-foot shot there. And White Plains calls a timeout as they've cut it down to six now. So an exciting last 150 to go in this game chase here between Section and White Plains. Absolutely. Two, uh, two great coaches here, Coach uh, Jamie Pruitt and, and Coach uh, Chris Randall. 
and you know they'll have their teams uh, ready to go here for the last minute 50. Yeah, and it's been, you know, it's one of these things with a time change on them. They were supposed to play this game, I think, at 12 o'clock today. Yes. And it got knocked back three and a half hours. Then they play about a minute and 43 seconds of the game. The power goes out. They go to the dressing room for about 30 minutes and come back out. So there have been some challenges here for both of these coaches to, uh, that's, that's part of it mentally to get your team uh, kind of back ready to go a couple of times from what they expected. Reeve will be inbounding the ball for the Lions. Full court press being applied by White Plains and Branford gets it for the Lions. Cross court to Woodall. Woodall crosses half court met by four White Plains defenders over to Branford this time. Back up to Reed. Inside the Gentry in the corner to Davis. And back outside, and they'll start it over again. Section doing a good job here. I like this. There's no shot clock in high school basketball, so they're going to make White Plains bring it to them. We'll have a tie-up and actually a timeout call before the tie-up. That's a good timeout because the possession error was in favor of White Plains. So a good timeout by Coach Pruitt over there on the section bench. 54 to 48 is sections lead here with a minute 15 left here in this one and we got a couple more games left for you as uh, Talladega and Plainview will take the floor next and then the last one today will be Alexandria and Oxford and I know if you're just tuning in you thought well thought there was more games than this well because of the snow we pushed it back JSU had their home game at one o'clock so we started this one around 3 30 and uh, there were supposed to be four games tonight uh, Gas City and Chelsea uh, was the nightcap but uh, due to the snow and travel conditions going to be getting a lot colder this evening Chelsea decided not to make the trip so uh, the fourth game uh, was canceled for tonight so we just got three games and three good games and we got a, a good minute 15 left in this one. You look there at the score 54 to 48, you know it's going to be a good one. Yeah, I like what Section's doing. They are, there's no shot clock, as we said, so I like the fact they're just pulling the ball out and running some time, making White Plains maybe foul them. Both teams are in the double bonus, by the way, for this last 110. Branford back to Davis inside to Gentry, back to Woodall in the corner to Reed, and they're just going to work it around. Excellent patience by Section. It has some open looks at the basketball, but then a throw away. But boy, Section gets it back. Gentry lays it up and in after a nice pass from Reed to Gentry. White Plains had what they wanted. They had the errant pass. Davis gets the pick that time. We'll take it to the other end. His shot no good. And Matthew Clay will pick up the push and foul. Going back to that previous possession, White Plains had exactly what they wanted. They forced an errant pass, the ball's on the floor. But instead of coming up with it, Section does. And not only did they get the ball, but they had a man wide open under the basket for an easy layup, giving them an eight-point lead. And then they get the steal again. They get a steal from White Plains. Now a chance to bring this to a double-digit lead. And this is amazing, considering how White Plains had this game in control late third quarter. They were up 12 points in the third, and now they're down by eight. It's been a remarkable turnaround by Section. The key to that is, I think, Section just shooting the basketball a whole lot better than they did in the first half. They sure did. It's Woodall. This is both of those free throws. Helms up ahead. He pulls up. Gets it inside to Ethan, Ethan Bozart. Bussy back out to Branham. Section almost gets it back with 20 seconds left. That'll be a three-pointer. No good from Austin Bussy. And with 10 seconds left here, Section Lions will walk it up the floor. Section going to go back to Jackson County with a win. And they trail for most of this game. But it is a 32-minute game, and Section wins it at the end. Nice win for Coach Jamie Pruitt and the Lions coming down here with all the weather and so forth from Jackson County, making the hour-and-a-half trip here. And they come away with an impressive 56-48 win. The 2A beating the 4A here at Pete Matthews Coliseum. Section turning it on, especially there in the second half with the shot selection and they will win our first game 
here in the TV24 Holiday Showcase. And uh, Gerhard Mathingani, he's going to round up both coaches for us and, uh, and uh, talk to them here in just a second as uh, Plainview makes their way out on uh, to the floor for warm-ups here. Got a good one uh, coming up next. And uh, let's go down court side. Here is Gerhard Mathingani. All right, here with coach, both coaches actually. We'll start with Coach Rand of White Plains. Coach, obviously, some weird circumstances to begin the game. The power going out. Talk about just being able to handle all the adversity and come out and play the way you did. Yeah, a little, little different. We got off to a good start. I thought we shot the ball really well. And, and uh, even after the power outage, we still came out and played a good first half. But well, we have to give credit to Coach Pruitt's section. Uh, they, they're very skilled. They shoot the ball well. All five guys they put in the game can dribble it, pass it. And, uh, and shoot it, and, and uh, they're very well coached on offense, and they do a great job of spacing the floor, and you can't help on anybody. So uh, they really made us pay every time we tried to help, and uh, they're going to have a fun season. Absolutely. Assess where your team is you know, through the first few games of the season. Obviously, you want to get hot late in the year, but where, where's your team stand as, as we speak right now? Well, you know, we're 5-3, and three and we're very young. We've, we've got one guy, Gavin Burge, is the only guy we have back from last year. But that's, that's not an excuse. It's just we have to we have to gain some confidence and, and learn how to finish games. We're pretty good first through third quarters, and we're not we're not finishing games well. And that's going to come with some experience, but that's on me. I've, I've, I've got to do a little bit better job of getting us in a position to win the games late. But it's not from lack of effort. Kids trying hard, and, and uh, you know, we're going to be 0-0 zero and zero when that area tournament starts anyway. So we're just trying to grind it out and get better for that. Final question. Talk about being able to play in this gym. Obviously, you get another chance at the Gallatin yeah, County Tournament, but being able to get in here where the eventual regionals are and the, and the, the next step towards Birmingham. Yeah, we, we really appreciate Mickey and TV24 uh, putting this on and and uh, the JSU folks allowing us to come play. It's a great venue, and uh, it's, it's always special when you get to play at the Pete. So uh, you make some memories up here, some good times, and, and the kids really get a kick out of it. So we're, we're very appreciative of getting to play. Always a pleasure, Coach. Hey, thanks, Coach. We'll see you down the road. Okay. And we're also here with uh, Coach Pruitt as well. First off, Coach, obviously, we, we talked at halftime, and, and one of the things that we talked about was being able to adjust. Your team did really well, especially in the fourth quarter. Talk about being able to come away with the win and, and the way your team played, especially late in the game. Well, I think the, one of the biggest things for us was that we – I didn't think our energy level was where it should have been, and especially in the first half, I thought we got out-hustled on a lot of loose balls on the floors, rebounds, things such as that. And we, I felt like we stepped up a lot better in the second half. Our energy was a lot better. And Coach Randall, I've coached against him for many years ago, and uh, his team's always play really hard, and I respect him a lot. He's got a great program there at White Plains. And, uh, you know, we we come away with a close victory, but my kids, we, we played a lot harder the second half than we did the first half, I thought. So I thought that was the biggest difference. For sure. We're right here in the beginning of December. Obviously, the season goes all the way into February and, and into March, and you want to get hot late. But assess where your team is after these first few games of the year. Well, we're uh, we're, we're kind of opposite, Coach. We've got a lot of seniors on the team. And, you know, I think when we come to play, we can play with most teams on our schedule. It just depends on if we're going to show up or not. And I thought the first half we kind of, for whatever reason, kind of sluggish, and then we picked it up the second half. and. If we can put together four quarters, I, I like our chances when we step on the court. So, one of the things we talked about about playing in this gym is it takes a little bit of adjustment. Right. How much will this help as you move forward? Because obviously this is the next step right before the uh, the Final Four. Right. Well, we're hoping to we're hoping to be here again when the regional tournament starts, and that's that's one of our main goals to get back here. And the more time we can spend in this gym, Coliseum is just I think it's going to help our kids out. You know, with. Uh, being in this environment and then being in this gym, because like I said, it's a lot different shooting it here than it is on regular most gyms we see every night. Good stuff, Coach. We really appreciate it. Appreciate you guys. Absolutely. Drive safe back down the section. All right, that is Coach Pruitt and Coach Randall, guys. And thanks, Gerhard. And, John, you know, they, uh, the, both coaches talked about playing in here uh, when it comes to regional time, and you know that's on their mind. But both teams did really good shooting in this gym. Absolutely. And you take that with you. These guys from section, if they make it back here, as Coach Fritt was talking about, to the Northeast Regionals in 2A, it'll be an opportunity for those guys to say, hey, we've been in here before. Those shooters are going to think, hey, you know, the last time I kind of thought it was this way and I adjusted my shooting in a certain way. So they'll have something to draw upon. It won't be a totally different experience. And I think it is.
is, as Coach Pruitt said, I think it's a big advantage to come here and play a couple of months before the regional and get accustomed to the surroundings. Of course, there'll be a big, bigger crowd here, but as far as the shooting, the environment, and those kind of things, I think a big advantage there and a big win for Section. Section goes to four and three. White Plains falls to four and three. They both played tremendously tough schedules. White Plains play in the 6A in Oxford, the opening game of the season. And then you look at Section, three losses, but those three losses, they lost by just five points to Scottsboro, who is a uh, 5A school. They lost also a very close game to Madison County, a 4A school. And then May Jemison, your defending state champions last year. Of course, they had John Petty, who's in Alabama now. But uh, still, to lose to that quality program out of Huntsville only by five points, this is probably, uh, I would expect, one of the top 2A teams in the state in section. And to get that... And to get that uh, win tonight, they had to go through a tough, tough physical White Plains team here, as you see them lighten it up uh, from the three line, and then you know, the section returned the favor all night long. Section really had started off the game, and they were woeful. Uh, they were down to this game 10 to one. They were down in the third quarter, 39 to 27, and then come back and win by eight points in the game. So they made a 20-point turnaround chase from say uh, about three minutes or so to go in the third to the end of the game, a 20-point turnaround for the Section Lions. And that tells me that Coach Pruitt and his team kind of found that shooting eye in the second half that they didn't have in the first half. Both teams uh, had to adjust a little bit because of the power outage we had here. We were playing for about a minute and 47 seconds, and then whammo, all of a sudden the lights went out, and we had about a 30-minute delay, but both teams recovered nicely. Great game coming up, uh, a great game they had, and a great game coming up. As you see, both teams warming up right now. Number one in 3A, Plainview, coming down from Rainsville, and the number eight team in 5A, the Talladega Tigers, up from Talladega County. That will be your next game coming up in literally just a few minutes here on TV24.